Two more Wuhan virus cases have been confirmed, bringing the total number of cases here to seven. The latest update was revealed earlier today by the Health Ministry. Both are male Chinese nationals from Wuhan. They tested positive for the virus yesterday night. One is a 56-year-old who arrived in Singapore on January 19. He developed a cough on January 25, 25th sorry, and went to Changi General Hospital the next day. Prior to that, he stayed with his family in Pasir Ris Grove. The other one is a 35. He arrived here on January 23rd and was staying at Marina Bay Sands. He had symptoms the next day, went to Raffles Hospital and was sent to NCID on the same day. All confirmed cases here are Chinese nationals from Hubei. There is no evidence that the virus has spread in the community, but this still presents a heightened risk to Singapore. The authorities also announced enhanced measures to limit the risk to Singapore. Now, we have senior correspondent Joyce Teo to share more with us. Welcome, Joyce. Hi. Now, Joyce, before we go on to you, of course, uh, Minister of the Nas National Development as well as Co-Chair of the Multi-Ministerial Task Force, Lawrence Wong, also spoke to members of the media earlier. Now, have a look. Just in the last 24 hours, we have seen the, an accelerating trend uh, in the infection among PRC national, nationals from Hubei province. Right, within Singapore itself, we have had a near doubling of imported cases overnight. Um, all of the cases confirmed in Singapore are imported and all of them are Hub Chinese nationals from Hubei. We are looking at new arrivals, all new visitors. The numbers have already come down because of all the measures taken by China and Singapore. But uh, given the heightened risk, we don't want to leave anything to chance, so we will not allow entry of any new visitor um, who has had recent travel history in Hubei or is holding a BRC passport issued in Hubei. Uh, no entry, nor will we allow transit through Singapore. Now, Joyce, of course, our Minister mentioned uh, quite briefly on the enhanced measures. If you could share with us and explain to us more on the latest developments. Um, as the minister said, it's actually they have these measures to prevent widespread uh, transmission because right now there's no community transmission, right? So they are um, asking people, you know, they're checking those people from passports from Hubei they, and those who have been there in the past 14 days, they're not allowed to enter or transit in Singapore. And this will start from noon on Wednesday. Right. So that means uh, to reiterate the point, mm -hmm. visitors from Hubei, now will not be allowed, even if it's through transiting via Singapore as well, it's not allowed Yes. Well. Yes. What about uh, visitors that have been here already? Um, yeah, so they've said um, there are about 2,000 of them from Hubei who are already here in Singapore. So the authorities are contacting them and those who are accessed to be of uh, higher risk, right, they will be quarantined at home or in suitable facilities. So those who have been in uh, close contact with a known source or who have travelled there in the past 14 days, so they will ask us to stay at home or be um, put at government quarantine facilities. So we've reported that some of them are the Changi chalets, mm -hmm. I think Sambang chalets, and they are also preparing school hostels for that. So it really depends on like how many of them are um, at a high risk. So if there are a lot, then obviously they'll have to prepare more facilities for them. Right. Now Joyce, uh, experts also have said that the outbreak will last mm -hmm. months at mm -hmm. least. And in your recent article as well, mm -hmm. you outlined that 20% of those infected could become severely ill. Mm -hmm. What can we do to protect ourselves? Um, so yeah, so the experts have said, I mean it's the same thing because it's like um, preventing a cold although there are some parts that we don't know of. So I think the key thing is to you know, wash your hands properly uh, with soap and water and then use uh, alcohol-based hand sanitizers if you don't have soap and water. And hand sanitizers, I think they said you have to use one that has more than 60% alcohol content. Mm -hmm. And of course if your hands are dirty, you, you, you can't so you have to wipe them clean because if it's oily, um, it wouldn't work as well. Right. Yeah. Just of course, uh, if you're unwell, then mm -hmm. to seek medical uh, help. Yes. And then uh, wear a mask if you have uh, respiratory symptoms. If you have shortness of breath, you're coughing, then you wear a mask to protect yourself and then it's vice versa as well. Mm. Now, yeah. uh, of course, Joyce, mm -hmm. uh, let's focus on some online claims that mm -hmm. have been circul circul circulating around now. Right. 
we need to be vigilant, of course. Mm -hmm. And of course, that includes taking a second look at online claims. Now, right. there have been bogus fear-mongering yes. claims circulating online. And one use of POFMA, in fact, for the claim mm -hmm. that someone had died here in Singapore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's, that's terrible. I think this is a time to actually stay calm and not panic. And then if you spread all this, you're just going to panic everybody. Because, uh, you know, as this develops, it, it, experts have really said it will last for months, right? And then very likely we'll have more cases. We should stay calm. What you can do is, you know, all those precautions that you take, um, wash your hands, be, you know, seek help if you have symptoms. I think if you have flu symptoms like, and it lasts for like two to three days more than that, you should go see a doctor. And actually, there is no need to like wear a mask everywhere. Yeah. Um, wear a mask if you have symptoms, but otherwise, uh, you should take care but not wear it everywhere, take your N95 and it just creates more panic around. Mm. I just want to focus on one uh, example and then mm -hmm. this was also outlined in our Ask ST article as well. Mm -hmm. There is this news that was going around on WhatsApp that certain neighbourhoods mm -hmm. have had cases reported mm -hmm. and you know people are asking should we avoid these places completely? Um, there's, there's no need to, yeah, because these are not confirmed cases, they are suspected cases. And also, um, the ministries have also said that uh, when you are... So those assessed to be of higher risk, that means you're in close contact. It doesn't mean that you walk past them, you're going to get the virus or you brush past them. So you need to be in contact with them for a reasonable amount of time and um, to be in close contact. And that they said it's usually is within two metres. Mm, yeah. Right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Joyce, for coming on to share a bit more mm -hmm. on the latest updates here in Singapore and, of course, the enhanced measures that were just announced mm -hmm. by right. the multi-ministerial uh, task force. Now, for more on mm -hmm. the Wuhan virus, you can uh, visit our Straits Times uh, chat website, which is straitstimes.com. Now, for the latest update also, you can subscribe to our Telegram channel at The Straits Times. 